what advice would you have for Christians who want to help someone struggling with same-sex attraction, and but they don't really know what to say or how to appear compassionate, but not judgmental, but also uphold God's plan for marriage and not condone something that they see as wrong or that is wrong? Yeah, it's a wonderful question. Something that we're really passionate about here, right, is mm-hmm. that the church can um, know that they have so much to offer <laughs> and know that they have so much to give. Um, and that, in my opinion, the body of Christ is the solution, you know, um, we are the answer. There is the, the, the value that we can cultivate a family that is totally countercultural to the world, you know? Um, and I think it's important that church bodies go on that journey of what does it look like to be the family of God? What does it look like to love one another, to not objectify one another, right? But to serve one another. And I think from that place, when it comes to someone in your congregation who is, um, you know, coming to you or opening up to you that they're experiencing same-sex attraction, if you find someone leaning into you relationally and and sharing that with you, well, you've done something right along the way because they've trusted you with something that's probably not easy to say. And so the way that you respond right there is so key, just responding with empathy and compassion, reminding that person when they confess to you that um, this doesn't change the way that you see them and that you're going to walk this through with them. Um, You know, I think if it's someone uh, also helping that person like, hey, I might not have all the answers, but we're going to go on a journey of getting some of those, uh, uh, those found, right? Like we have change movement. We can get some resources from them. We're going to do this together. Um, as well as helping that person find um, healthy community in their congregation is important. Like men need to have a vulnerable space that's safe for with other men. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether you have same-sex attraction or not, but specifically if you do, because a lot of the times there's a fear and a disconnect with the same sex. It's like, I don't measure up to being a man. For example, a lot of men can feel that way when they struggle with SSA. They need to know that they belong amongst other men. And so men, inviting men into their homes, having conversations, you know, being in their lives, being intentional, um, inviting them into those masculine fellowship gatherings are important. And on the other side with women, it's important that that is also there, that women have a place to belong amongst other women and be able to share this, not just with you, but with multiple people and realize that they're going to be loved and that you're going to walk with them. So, so there's that side, right? Like I have a relationship with someone and someone tells me, and then the other side is, oh, I, I may observe that this person, or I've heard that they're struggling, or maybe they've been open about it. Um, maybe they're thinking they can be uh, a Christian and be gay, for example, um, and they're in your congregation and they're so maybe they're at a place where you don't see eye to eye on the topic, but you're they're coming into your church and they're fellowshipping. And I just pause here. I think it's important that we as the church create that space, right, for anybody to come and re- and be in the presence of God and worship him and receive from the Lord. Um, and so if, that, if you're in that place and you're like, I would love to pursue this person, I would love to build connection. My advice is to build relationship, you know, put their label and put that aside um, and and pursue connection with them. You know, I think it can be really powerful to have people in your home, you know, have a meal together, creating a place where you're just getting to know who the person is, you're getting to care about them. And eventually what's going to happen when you start building that trust together, eventually is probably going to come up, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you see this area of my life and how do you think God sees it? And now that's going to be your opportunity to respond with, hey, I, I actually, I believe in a biblical view of marriage and here's why. Like, I think it's beautiful and powerful, but I also believe the Lord loves you and he cares about this, but I don't believe that's his design. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, despite us seeing this differently, I still would love to walk with you and um, a- answer their questions, you know, get in the word together. And if you don't know the answer, it's okay to say, you know, actually, I'm not sure. Let's go on a journey of exploring scripture together. You mm-hmm. know, let's let's watch some content about this. Let's find that answer together. Um, and then you know, the last thing I would say, once you build that connection, is get curious. You know, ask questions. When when did this happen for you? When did this? When did you start experiencing this? And mm-hmm. you're listening, trying to get clues for was there anything in their life where this started? 
Um, and most importantly, as they're open, leading them into encounters with the Lord, you know, do they actually know how that they can hear God, that he wants to meet with them? How can you facilitate moments? Um, you know, these are probably going to be more one-on-one. -on -one. You built close relationship settings. But how can you facilitate moments where they can encounter the Lord, right? Every single person that I know that has been, has received radical healing in this area of their life and seen the same-sex attraction significantly decrease or, you know, let go of the label or would say, I don't experience this anymore. It all began because they had an encounter with Jesus himself. You know, you and I can't persuade anybody. And it doesn't help to get into that, right? And but Jesus, he's pretty persuasive when he he knows how to break through with his kindness. It's this kindness that leads us to repentance. And and so facilitating those moments, inviting them into worship in your home, you know, just fellowshipping, allowing them to see your life, sharing Jesus. How what has Jesus been to you? How has he healed your life? How has he met you sharing places of victory of like, you know, um, hey, I had this issue in my life and I and it was painful and God met me. And, you know, now I don't struggle with it. Um, mm -hmm. Testimonies can be so powerful, um, encouraging words, you know, speaking over someone, you know, a lot of the times like for me, I didn't feel beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I didn't feel that feminine expression. And so even just. Sometimes we forget that the most simple affirmation, um, a lot of the times individuals that struggle with same-sex attraction, they're starving for affirmation and acceptance. And so finding ways to encourage them and to call out the beauty you see in them, the giftings on their life um, can be really powerful.